Paul would put people on guard with the scriptures in the New Testament that in the church there would be wolves that would come up among them. Acts 20 verse 28, Paul says this, Be on guard for yourselves for all the flock, among which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers, to shepherd the church of God, which he purchased with his own blood. I know that after my departure, savage wolves will come in among you, not sparing the flock. And from among your own selves, men will arise speaking perverse things to draw away the disciples after them. You see, Paul understands what's, what, what's going on. From within the church would come a falling away. Wolves would come in and they would basically speak perverse things and draw disciples after themselves, okay? He would actually speak of this in multiple occasions. Look on the screen here in Galatians. He has to remind them, you foolish Galatians, you were doing so well. What caused you to fall away? Okay, why do you think that you can perfect your own self by the law? It's only through faith in Christ that you're saved. He's got to correct the errors from early believers. In Philippians, he says they all seek after their own interests, not those of Jesus Christ. In 1 Timothy 5.15, some have already turned aside to follow Satan. Okay? In 2 Timothy 3.8, so these men also oppose the truth, men of depraved mind, rejected in regard to the faith. You see, there's a constant spiritual attack going on even after the church is established at Pentecost. Okay? The church is under attack. Savage wolves are coming in. Satan wants to distract men from the truth, men and women and children and the whole world from the truth, and he does this. In fact, Paul has to emphasize this in 2 Thessalonians 2 verse 1. He says, Now we request you, brethren, with regard to the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering together to him, that you do not be quickly shaken from your composure or be disturbed either by a spirit or a message or a letter as it is from us, to the effect that the day of the Lord has come, Look what he says in verse 3. Let no one in any way deceive you, for it will not come unless the apostasy comes first. Okay, apostasy. Apostasy means falling away. Meaning a falling away from the gospel of Jesus Christ, from the apostolic gospel that the apostles preached when Christ rose from the dead. Okay? He said a falling away from the church would have to come first. And the man of lawlessness is revealed, the son of destruction, who opposes and exalts himself above every so-called God or object of worship, so that he takes his seat in the temple of God, displaying himself as being God. Okay, a lot of people are misapplying the scriptures here because they're thinking a literal temple in literal Jerusalem when this is talking about spiritual Jerusalem. Okay, this is spiritual Babylon. Okay. The apostasy must happen first. 1 John 2, 18. Children, it is the last hour, and just as you heard, the Antichrist is coming. Even now, many Antichrists have appeared. For this we know, that is the last hour. I should say this. Antichrist, you might think, someone who opposes Christ or who is against Christ. But it also means at the same time, Antichrist means someone who stands in the place of Christ. Okay, a substitute for Christ, all right? Like what you see? Subscribe to our channel on YouTube, or you can go to angelsintheglen.org. That's angelsintheglen.org. We've got an entire series for you to take you through the events that must take place before Christ returns. God wants his people ready. It's not a time to fear. It's a time to be ready. I hope you'll join us.